So today let's study about rectus sheath. Rectus sheath is the covering of the rectus abdominis muscle. What you are seeing is actually the rectus sheath, anterior layer of the rectus sheath. This is the rectus abdominis muscle. Now this is the posterior layer of the rectus sheath which forms the posterior lining or the posterior covering of the rectus abdominis muscle. This rectus sheath is formed by three muscles. Okay. From outside inwards, the external oblique, then the internal oblique muscle and the third one is a transverse abdominis muscle. Third is a transverse abdominis muscle. Okay. The flattened tendons of these three muscles will form the aponeurotic layer which will cover the rectus abdominis anteriorly and posteriorly. The anterior layer is complete. It will be extending from the origin to the insertion of the muscle. So this anterior layer is extending from the pubic symphysis up to the ribs. Okay. So the origin of the muscle is from the pubic symphysis and the insertion is into the lower ribs. Okay, lower ribs. So it is completely covering the muscle, the anterior layer. Then we have the posterior layer which is incomplete. This posterior layer as we see it is extending only from the coastal margin. This is a coastal margin. It is extending from the coastal margin here and it is continuing downwards and it is extending only up till this line that is the arcuate line. You can see this is actually the arcuate line. Below the arcuate line there is no tendon or there is no aponeurotic layer. So it is only the fascia transversalis which will form the posterior layer below the uh, post, uh, which will form the posterior relation of the rectus abdominis inferior to the arcuate line. So posteriorly it is deficit below the arcuate line. Next, let us see the some of the features of rectus sheath. If you see the rectus sheath, it is fused on the midline on from the either side. Okay, this is a, this side rectus sheath and this is from this side. Okay, so both the rectus sheath will fuse in the midline to form a thickened white, white part here in the midline called the linea alba. Okay, and this rectus sheath is fused along the lateral border of the rectus abdominis muscle to form linea semilunaris okay to form linea semilunaris that is the external feature then we can even see the tendinous intersection there is small depressed areas which are found along the tendinous intersections of the rectus abdominis muscle you can see there are three consistent tendinous intersections of the rectus abdominis muscle one at the level of umbilicus one at the level of xiphoid process here and one between these two okay these three are the three consistent tendinous intersection those features also can be seen from externally then if you go into the contents of the rectus sheath, if you open up the rectus sheath, the main content as we see, already we have seen, this is actually the rectus abdominis muscle, which is the main content, okay. If you open up the rectus abdominis, from the posterior layer of the, from the posterior aspect of the rectus abdominis, we can see this artery, which is related to the rectus abdominis, you can see here, that is actually the inferior epigastric artery, which will be coming like this, this is the inferior epigastric artery here, okay, this is the inferior epigastric artery, you can see the artery clearly. That is the inferior epigastric artery. So superiorly, you can see here, this is actually the superior epigastric artery. This is actually the superior epigastric artery. So these two are the arteries which are related in say as the content of the rectus sheath. Next, if you see the nerves, there are many intercostal nerves which will be coming and supplying the rectus abdominis and the anterior abdominal wall. You can see this, this is actually the intercostal nerves. So the lower lower five intercostal nerves along with the subcostal nerve will be the content of the rectus sheath. You can see few nerves here. This is one. This is another one. Okay. This is another one. So few intercostal nerves can be seen as the content. Next, there are some lymphatics and also some veins which will be accompanying the superior and the inferior epigastric artery which will be the content of the rectus sheath. So what are the contents? So the rectus abdominis muscle and there is one more muscle, a small muscle which will be related inferiorly that is the pyramidalis muscle. So rectus abdominis and pyramidalis are the two muscles and superior, epi superior epigastric and the inferior epigastric arteries are the two arteries. Then the superior and the inferior epigastric veins and the intercostal nerves and along with the subcostal nerve and also the lymphatics. These are all the contents of rectus abdominis muscle. Next, let's study about the anterior and the posterior layer, how it is formed. So, for, for better understanding, we can uh, we can study in three different levels, okay, three different levels. One, between the coastal margin 
and the superior attachment of the muscle okay from the superior attachment of muscle till the costal margin that is the part one second is from the costal margin from the costal margin this is a costal margin up to the up to the arcuate line you can see this this is the arcuate line okay up to the arcuate line up to the arcuate line is the second part then below the arcuate line is the third part okay so each place the anterior and the posterior layer differs okay so if you see the upper aspect that is from the uh, costal margin till the costal margin till the insertion of the muscle here it is entirely anterior layer is formed by this aponeurosis okay that is the external oblique aponeurosis posterior layer is deficit because it is resting directly over the bones okay directly over the ribs and the costal cartilage okay so posterior layer is deficit and anterior layer is entirely formed by the external oblique aponeurosis then come to the middle part okay from the costal margin up to the arcuate line the anterior layer is formed by the external oblique aponeurosis and also this internal oblique muscle okay this internal oblique will split into two aponeurotic layers and superior lamina and an inferior lamina the superior lamina will cover the muscle anteriorly okay will be covering the muscle anteriorly so this anterior layer is formed by two structures one is the external oblique aponeurosis and the superior lamina which is coming from the from the internal oblique muscle okay so that forms the anterior layer in the middle part the posterior layer is formed by the inferior lamina of the second muscle that is the internal oblique internal oblique inferior lamina and also the next layer that is the transverse abdominis muscle okay the, the aponeurotic layer of the transverse abdominis muscle so that forms the inferior layer okay so inferior layer is formed by the inferior lamina of the internal oblique and the transverse abdominis okay and the aponeurotic layer of the transverse abdominis and then coming below the arcuate line okay coming below the arcuate line you know the posterior layer is deficit there is no posterior layer okay it is directly resting on fascia transversalis so all the three aponeurotic layers of the three muscles will be coming anteriorly all the external oblique the internal oblique and the fascia trans and the uh, transverse abdominis muscles uh, aponeurotic layer all the three will pass anterior to the muscle so posterior layer is deficit so that is about the arrangement of rectus sheath in three different levels for better understanding of the layers of the rectus sheath we can have a model like this actually this is actually the rectus abdominis muscle this is actually the rectus abdominis muscle of either side okay this is the sternum these are the ribs lower ribs okay this is actually the pelvic bone this is actually the pubic part okay pubis you can see the rectus ab abdominis is starting from the pubic bone and extending over the costal margin so it is extending few inches above the costal margin okay so it is resting over the ribs also okay so this rectus abdominis you can see the tendinous intersections three consistent tendinous intersection one at the level of umbilicus one at the level of the costal margin and one between these two okay these are three tendinous intersection this is the umbilicus okay this is the umbilicus okay now after understanding the specimen now we'll see three muscles which are responsible for forming the rectus sheath one is the posterior most muscle that is the transverse abdominis okay posterior most muscle of the anterior abdominal that is the transverse abdominis then over the transverse abdominis we have internal oblique muscle okay we have internal oblique muscle and this is the aponeurotic layer of internal oblique muscle okay next we have the third or the superior most layer that is the external oblique muscle and the external oblique aponeurosis okay so that is the order okay now we'll study the formation of the rectus sheath at three different regions one above the level of the above the level of the costal margin if you see here see the posterior wall is deficit because it is resting directly over the ribs okay only the anterior wall is present which is entirely covered by the external oblique aponeurosis so this is the internal oblique which will not cover above the costal margin so this is the external oblique so external oblique only will form the anterior covering of the rectus sheath at this first part okay okay posterior layer is deficit now coming to the second part which will be extending from the costal margin up to arcuate line this is the arcuate line 
how to identify the place of arcuate line it is the midway between the umbilicus and the pubic symphysis you can see this is the midway between the umbilicus and the pubic symphysis that is the position of arcuate line this is the arcuate line which is formed by the inferior part of the transverse abdominis tendon okay aponeurosis of the transverse abdominis on the posterior aspect okay okay so the posterior layer is formed by one the transverse abdominis okay and over the transverse abdominis we have this internal oblique muscle which is splitting into two lamina one is the anterior lamina and other one is posterior lamina the posterior lamina will go behind the posterior lamina will go behind the muscle okay like this okay so now the posterior layer is formed by two structures one is the transverse abdominis uh, the tendon of the transverse abdominis that is the aponeurosis of the transverse abdominis and the posterior lamina of the internal oblique muscle okay and the posterior lamina of the internal oblique muscle that is in the middle part posterior layer if you see the anterior layer of the middle part it is formed by the anterior lamina of the internal oblique muscle anterior lamina of the internal oblique muscle and also the external oblique muscle this external oblique you have to understand it is entirely covering the muscle from the origin to the insertion okay so that is the anterior lamina that is the anterior layer which is formed by the external oblique and the anterior lamina of the internal oblique okay now we will see below the level of arcuate line as you see below the level of the arcuate line there is uh, there is no rectus sheath it is directly the muscle is resting directly on the transfer, uh, transversalis fascia fascia transversalis okay now if you see the anterior layer it is formed by all the layers so you can see this is again the transverse abdominis posterior uh, this is the trans the layer from the transverse abdominis the last muscle you can see okay the layer from the transverse abdominis then the anterior and the posterior laminas of anterior and the posterior laminas of the internal oblique and also the external oblique so all the three muscles aponeurotic layer will form the anterior bound anterior covering but posterior covering is deficit so this is a model to demonstrate the coverings which are formed at the rectus abdominis muscle okay anterior and the posterior covering of rectus abdominis at three different levels thank you